Hi, this is your Sapnil Bhartiya. Welcome to TFR Let's Talk. We are here at KubeCon and CloudNativeCon in Salt Lake City, Utah. And today we have with us Nathan Golding, Senior Vice President of Engineering at Vulture. Nathan, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure to host you here. Tell our viewers a bit about Vulture. What do you folks do? Absolutely. So Vulture is the largest uh, independently held cloud computing company in the world. Uh, what this means is that we deploy uh, cloud CPU, cloud GPU, bare metal uh, into 32 global data centers um, around the world. And what this means is that we're able to reach about 90% of the world's population uh, with latencies uh, sub 40 milliseconds. And when we look at cloud, you know, the definition of cloud is changing, evolving because the way we are consuming, we also talk a lot about edge, we talk about centralized, we talk about decentralized. Uh, how are you looking at other spaces? Absolutely, I think that's such a really good call out. And I think that the way that uh, infrastructure gets consumed really has evolved over the years. And when you look in the early days of cloud infrastructure and you look at taking these bare metal systems and carving them up into virtual machines as being kind of the first wave of cloud infrastructure. Uh, and now, you know, you look at even just being here at KubeCon and really Kubernetes being kind of the, uh, the base foundational layer of how people uh, consume and deploy cloud infrastructure uh, is really remarkable to see the change uh, moving from consuming individual virtual machines to deploying at scale uh, infrastructure as code, uh, I think is the first thing. And, you know, looking at the actual global deployment model of centralized versus edge, I I really think that it comes down to the use case. And I think that, you know, when you look at what works for centralized models, these are, uh, you know, kind of your, your uh, OSS, BSS systems, your centralized APIs that do, that handle all of your accounts and billing and things like that, that really favors a centralized model. Uh, when you look at things like uh, uh, inferencing or uh, uh, cloud delivery, uh, you know, uh, cloud delivery models of actually accessing end users at the edge of the network. That's really where a distributed model really comes into play. And so I think you know, for a while, uh, I would say probably about five years ago, there was a huge push towards edge computing uh, and really pushing the boundaries and the limits of what edge computing really means. Uh, and there's there was a theory that maybe we would go extend all the way to cell towers. If that is that the true edge, um, and I think that some of that uh, early ambition on what edge looks like has been tailored a little bit. Uh, which is why we at Vulture are focused on uh, deploying into major metro markets around the world so that we can service a large portion of the world's population uh, with really great latency uh, uh, within kind of like reasonable targets of what that looks like for uh, still, you know, tier three data centers um, and, and really uh, ensuring that we're able to meet the reliability uh, and scalability demands of our customers. Excellent, thank you. Now let's talk about some of the trends that are happening in the engineering space. Uh, I think at this KubeCon, one of the focus also on platform engineering. Absolutely. How do you focus folks look at platform engineering, or even before we go into how Vulture looks at it, how would you define platform engineering? Absolutely, so I think that, you know, first of all, I would say that Vulture is probably the platform for platform engineering. <laughs> um, I think that platform engineering teams typically, at least what uh, you know, I've seen in my career, as, as well as what we see uh, at, at Vulture, is that platform engineering teams are really the teams that are focused on providing an abstraction layer to application developers to deploy their application onto it. Um, and it's not just infrastructure, it's the supporting ecosystem of that. And so that comes down to, uh, again, the, the, the container runtime environment, how you actually can integrate that into a CI, CD pipeline, uh, as well as provide you know, kind of day two operational support around observability, monitoring, telemetry. It's the whole ecosystem of what it really means and what it really takes to deploy an application into the environments that you have from development to staging to QA to production, however many environments that you have uh, in, in, inside of your company. The platform engineering team is the team that's really responsible for ensuring that that's a, a frictionless experience for, uh, for developers, both new and existing developers at, at your company to be able to deploy their application uh, quickly and easily and securely. Can you also talk about how is platform engineering kind of evolving with inference, edge, AI? Another great question. I think that the platform engineering team and that mindset has really evolved over the years. And I think that really, and again, it goes back to the evolution of cloud infrastructure to begin with. And your platform engineering teams today really are focused on consuming a small subset of fundamental cloud infrastructure. I think that in the early days, if you look at some of the hyperscalers in terms of the services that they offer, they offer in some cases 200 plus managed services. Those things, those services really appeal to companies who don't have a platform engineering team. They say, "We're if you deliver a service as a, as a cloud provider, I'm going to consume it. There is no platform engineering team. The platform engineering team is really focused on consuming fundamental infrastructure. And these are the core suite of services from compute, load balancer, storage, and really stitching these together in a way that it makes those 
workloads portable between cloud and not even just between clouds in a multi-cloud environment, but also in a hybrid cloud environment. Some so some companies are even, you know, they, they deploy some applications still on-prem inside of data centers, and then they uh, connect that through direct connect to the hyperscaler clouds and to Vultra uh, similarly, and they're able to manage this environment. And typically Kubernetes is the fundamental underlying orchestrator of all of that workload. Can you talk about what are the patterns, trends you are seeing when it comes to platform engineering? You know, I, I think that it kind of goes back to what I was saying in terms of the maturity of platform engineering as a function within an organization. And I think that, you know, if you look, if you surveyed all of the attendees here at KubeCon, you'd probably uh, understand that a lot of the people who are attending here who are learning about Kubernetes either for the first time or whether they're seasoned uh, technologists, that there's still a lot to learn and there's still a lot of growth in that area, but that companies are, are understanding that having a platform engineering team is important and super critical to the success of their own business. And I think that that's really, really important important is that the technology is not a commodity that, that these you know the technology really can be for a business a really a competitive advantage and so what would that mean in terms of if this really was a competitive advantage well how can we hire and develop and grow a platform engineering team that will really accelerate our business goals and our product goals and so I think that's really been an, a really an evolution that's taken place in the last I would say maybe two to three years with the maturity of platform engineering teams going from kind of an idea to concept to now when you look around us you know the the, the, the booming growth of of that has, has been just enormous and incredible to witness. Since we are talking about AI, Gen AI, what kind of, for the last two KubeCons, there were a lot of focus on Gen AI. What kind of discussions you are seeing around Gen AI? Are we still talking about this is a hype? Are we still talking about it's early ages? Or you're saying that, hey, it's in production and people are actually putting them, I mean, there is a lot of hype in the consumer space, but in the enterprise space, what are you seeing? So I think that there's, I would say, a, a bifurcation, a really, kind of a bright red line in terms of how companies view Gen AI, but also what the next evolution of that is, with is which is this uh, agentic AI. Um, and what that is, is stitching together not just a large language model, but also stitching that together with your own proprietary business data, uh, tying that back to your uh, uh, back office systems for actual account data and customer data, uh, tying that into your IAM system for permissions. And those are all things that really, you know, and we've seen this and I've seen this personally uh, at, at several companies where there's a you know, top-down initiative that says, figure out what our LLM strategy is. And there isn't really a guide, there isn't really guiding principles around what that means or why it's important or what that means, you know, what that, how that would be a, a differentiator for a particular business and that leads in general to a consumption of an open source model that hasn't been trained uh, and, and hooked up to let's say your a rag database a vector database for uh, real you know for documentation or product pricing things like that it's just simply an LLM that, that was taken off the shelf which really provides limited value there isn't a lot in terms of the value of an, a generic LLM that hasn't been trained on your business data or has access to customer data but then the moment that you open that up to say okay well now they do have access to customer data this this LLM well now we have to control permissions data governance regulation privacy those those are a lot of complex issues that come up. And so I think that we are in the early innings of agentic AI, uh, but I think that that's an incredibly uh, 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 exciting and innovative space that we will see continued development over the course of the next couple of years. Um, and so I think that there's been a, there was an early hype cycle around Gen AI. I think there's been at this point, kind of a consolidation, at least in the open source realm around Llama. I think as an open source model, Llama is, you know, kind of is the de facto standard. Um, obviously, there are folks who are focusing on building their own foundational models, and we're obviously those are the, the household names that we're all aware of. Um, and then, and I think that when it comes to the more enterprise adoption of LLMs, it's going to have to involve IAM for permissioning. It's going to have to involve RAG for, uh, um, you know, retrieval augmented generation for, you know, real time data to product catalogs and documentation. Uh, it's going to have to get hooked up to internal API service APIs so that the LLM is not just responding with generic information, but contextual or real-time information. Uh, and so I think that we will absolutely see that evolution. I would say that we're probably not quite there yet, but we see that on the horizon and it's probably on the near-term horizon, not the far out horizon. One concern that emerges, you know, whenever we talk about AI, Gen AI is ethics, morality, yeah, of course, with the, I don't even want to get into all the copyrights and you know access to data, but uh, what are the concerns around ethical or responsible AI, and how does Vulture or you look at it? You know, I think that 
certainly at Vulture, we are a provider of fundamental cloud infrastructure. And so our entry point into um, AI and machine, lead, uh, machine learning is at the uh, infrastructure layer. And so we provide our customers access to the underlying infrastructure. We provide our customers access to a, a Kubernetes engine that gives them access to GPUs inside of their existing uh, kind of ecosystem of, of application development. So I would say that we are probably one step removed from needing to, to uh, deal with some of those ethical concerns because we're a provider of fundamental infrastructure. Having said that, I think that it's an incredibly important topic. And I think that you know, the, the, you know, these AI models are uh, only uh, uh, good insofar as the data that they're trained on is good. And so I think that you know, as you're looking at the data that is being used to train this, as you're looking at how these uh, large language models and decisioning models are used and implemented for you know, a business in terms of, you know, something is, let's say, you know, uh, uh, resume analysis, you know, you get a thousand resumes, wouldn't it be great if we could have, um, you know, uh, uh, an AI uh, model re review those to see what would be a good fit against this job description. Seems great in theory and, and potentially could get implemented in a, uh, a safe way, but you have to be mindful of the ethical implications of that. And you have to be a responsible party when it comes to how you actually would consider implementing that. Since we are, of course, here at the show, this is like, First day show has been around. Uh, you're middle of the show. First of all, what has been your experience so far? Number one. Number two is that what are the new trends that you are seeing here at the show? So yeah, it, it is obviously it's still you know the first day one here uh, at KubeCon. But I would say that uh, one of the just first impressions that's hard to uh, that it's hard to escape from is the feeling that this is the the both the breadth and the depth of services and companies that are um, uh, really involved in it, uh, integrating themselves into the Kubernetes ecosystem is undeniable. Um, and I think that, that is probably one of the, the biggest first impressions of being here is the excitement level, the engagement level, uh, and, and the attendance here has just been incredible. And that's something that I think just speaks to the widespread adoption of Kubernetes as the fund fundamental uh, uh, layer of abstraction from infrastructure to application developers uh, with, with platform engineering teams being that conduit. Um, it, it's really just been manifested in, in the uh, incredible uh, engagement and attendance here. Nathan, once again, thank you so much for joining me today. Of course, great insights where the world is heading, great insight about platform is using, Gen AI. Thanks for all those insights, and I'd love to have you folks back on the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. It was great to be here. Look forward to it.